This is a quick video on how to do the Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk rear knuckle bushings. There's not really a good video about it or what to do or how to even do the bushings. I've already pressed out the bushings on the one side. There's two of these and one of these. And I used a custom tool, something I got from work that was turned down for the big one. And for the singles, I use a 32 millimeter socket. But I didn't use a hydraulic press because the knuckle's really awkward. I used a ball joint press with an impact gun pushing them out. Always check your ride height before you start because when you go to rebolt all your suspension pieces in the back, you want to be at the ride height. Otherwise, you'll have problems with your bushings and stuff. And always use metric. If you don't use metric and you use imperial, you're going to have rounding out sockets and nuts and bolts. As you can see, I've had to file these down because I used to use a 3 quarter instead of a 19 mil and I ended up damaging the edges with the stupid caps on the bolts. So normally you come with this one, which is a 32 mil socket, but mine is a weird, I don't know if it's a old rear arm or rear axle or one from South America, because I know South American ones have it, but I have this, which is like the front, and it takes a 36 mil. And here's a little trick. To get the so you have grip to take the bolt off the wheel bearing hub. Yes, I know I need to do my brakes, but that's not the point right now. First, you remove the rotor brake assembly. You can actually get all these off back here to let your caliper sit over here somewhere. Then you gotta take the rear control arm, or they call it the spring link, that bolt. And, let's see if it focuses. That actually uses an Allen key head to hold, to hold it in place while you loosen the nut off. And you take your stabilizer arm out. Drop the link. It says take the spring out. I didn't have to the last time. Then you remove your toe link right there. Or I think they called the they called the camber link. Sorry. And then your toe link. This is usually this is my really bad one. And then the trailing link, which is here, behind here, all of it metric. Support under here after you get the rotor and dust pad off. One thing I forgot is you want to have an e torx. A T55 for your bracket bolts for the uh, brake pads so you can get the rotor off for this guy. Just like that. This is essentially my setup. Stick the impact on that side. 32 mil socket and a receiver. It only goes so far, so I'll have to stop, swap out this ring for a little longer one once it gets further in. But it works. That'll work on that one too. Sorry, it'll work on this one too. That one's a little different. You have to be really careful because the race is really small. Unless you have to have something really close to the OD to push it out the same way. Alright, now they're out. And this is the kit you want from Chassis Pro. CP1879. They're an exact fit for these Trailhawks. Moog has a replacement for this one, but just this one, not the other one. But this is an exact fit for Trailhawks. Right, press them in, opposite of the way you got them out. Basically, the tool you use for. This big guy, you can use to push them all in. And you want them about 
even each side. And then reassembly is the same as disassembly. Torque specs for everything. There. And there. Always put anti-seize on the hub flange. Very thin coat. That way you can get this off a lot easier when you do your brakes. Or you have to do other repairs where you have to take this off instead of having to hit it with a sledgehammer and potentially damage it permanently where you can't reuse it if you if you need to. And you do not have to put the set screw back. All that is is for assembly purposes. The rotor is centric to the hub, not the bolt that came out of there. So if this gets stuck, you can drill it out no problem. Don't worry about it. When you put the brakes back on, be careful not to twist your lines. And a little trick is look at the striations and make sure they're nice and smooth and don't twist around like that. That's perfect. Here I, again, put a couple bolts in so it doesn't rotate. I usually just run it in. I don't push it in, I just tap the impact just enough just to get it to touch and then torque it to the spec sheets on the spec sheet there that I showed. Um, only let it click once because if you click it more than once and keep tightening and tightening it, you will damage the bearing. And after you're done torquing it down, remove the wheel again, stake this style. If you don't have this style, then you don't have to worry about it. But, and then reinstall your cap if uh, you don't have to stake it. And put your lug nuts on, torque the spec. And that's pretty much it. We'll for a drive and see how it how it goes.